on the screen, you will see the <gasps> Encouragematic Cinematic Centimeter. Ooh, what is that? Ha, huh. what is an Encouragematic Cinematic Centimeter? Scent is a part of our world. Now, did you know the Bible talks about aroma, which is scent? See, this is a, a text in Ephesians 2 because it says, Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ, because he loved you and offered himself up for you as a sacrifice for you, a pleasing aroma to God. And he wants you to be a really nice aroma, a bit like the, oh, I love the smell of licorice. I love the smell of nice cologne. Yeah, I love that. And honey is good. Oh, not so good on the seaweed. Right, now come in here. Um, Pastor Chanel is going to start cooking some stuff. Does anybody like the smell of onions? Do you like the smell of onions? Oh, come on. Pastor Chanel loves the smell of onions. He loves it. Smell this. Oh, man, it just smells. The aroma from these is not very pleasing to the nostrils. Mm -hmm. So what this text says to us is that God wants us to be a great aroma and fill your life with love. How does love become an aroma? Hmm, I want you to think about that. That's a good question, isn't good it? Question. Yeah. These were both written by Paul, being an encourager. And he's talking to these guys in um, Thessalonians. He says, overwhelm them with appreciation and love. He goes, gently encourage the stragglers, warn the freeloaders and reach out to the exhausted and pull them up to their feet. Look for the best in each other and always be the best you can be. You know, this text talks about warning. Sometimes you can encourage people by helping them, you know, like realize the error of their ways. Because sometimes we get it all wrong, don't we, boys and girls? You know, where we, where we think, you know what, this is how we should go. But we've got a friend that comes and goes, hey, you know what, let's Let's just, um, you, you, you just need to calm down a little bit and do it maybe a different way. And we need friends in our lives like that, don't we? That, that are encouragers, mm -hmm. gently encourage stragglers. You know, um, have you ever been the last one in a race and you just need somebody to get behind you and go, hey, come on, come on, keep on going. We used to do that. Um, in, in long distance running, you know, when a pack of us would be together and we'd be yelling to the guys behind, hey, come on. Or if we were the one behind and we were feeling pooped, we'd be going, oh, come on, let's, let's go. Yeah, so um, encouraging gently, gently, mm, gently encourage the, mm. doesn't seem to be gentle with the knife, is it? No. <laughs> No? I'm sure the rosemary doesn't find this very uh, No, this is, this is probably more gentle where you just take a few things just and just, just put it in and sprigs. Mm -hmm. Gentle. You know, we need to be gentle with people because sometimes when people are, are struggling, they just need that encouragement to, to get a little bit better. Now, it's interesting that these texts look for the best in each other and always do your best. Look at your friends. Look at the people around you. Look for the best, not for the worst. Don't look at their bad points. But always do your best to bring out the good bits. Now, isn't that something that we all need, boys and girls? I think it is. Because, you know, the Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, everybody's made mistakes. The things that we want to do, the things that we don't want to do, we do do. And you know what? We all need somebody to look for the best in us. And I know God does that for you. Jesus said that if you were the only one on this earth, you know, with all your flaws, he would have still died for you, boys and girls. And that's something that's really important. Now, this was written by Paul. So this was Saul. And all of a sudden, he, he was a pretty bad guy. He was a pretty good, bad guy, and he was actually persecuted people. If, you, if you're looking at horrible histories, you'd be going, Paul the persecutor. Well, he meets Jesus, and then he wants to tell 
everybody about this guy who changed his life and accepted him, even when he wasn't good. Now, Paul became a prisoner of the Rome, uh, the Roman Empire, and he was on his way to Rome as a captive when all of a sudden his ship sunk and he went down into the water. Everybody went down to the water. And you know what? He didn't run away with his, his carers. He stayed there. And if you looked at the encourager meter, he was an encourager right there because he could have made it really hard for the, the people. You know, that encouragematic, cinematic centimetre, it's a, a great one. And, and, you know, Paul in that stage was an encourager. But you know what? Paul wrote nearly half, well, most of the New Testament. He was one of the major writers of the New Testament because, you know what? He loved Jesus and he loved people. And you know where he wrote them from? He wrote them while he was under arrest in Rome. House arrest. See the big chain that he was at? So poor old Paul. And he was writing back to the churches, writing to people and going, hey, you know what? Look for the best in people. Encourage each other, even if they're struggling. Ah, oh, he's an amazing guy. I think there are a few different ways that you can be an encourager, boys and girls. And I want you to think, you know, it can be with words, it can be with actions. It can be who you are. This guy, Cheng Zhu, when he was just 13 years of age, he, in a train accident, a level crossing accident, he lost both his legs. And you can see in that picture, he's walking up. And, and guess what he does? He loves to climb mountains. As a matter of fact, he's climbed, you know, he's climbed all the major mountains in China. Now, Cheng Zhu actually found another young lad who at six years old lost both his legs too. And he said, hey, why don't you come and climb mountains with me? That's amazing. So he encouraged it. And now he goes all around China telling people that they can achieve great things regardless of how they are, what their background has been, what their family has been. They can do great things and doesn't matter on the disabilities, the things that are that seem to hold us back. That's amazing. Now, there's another guy that I was inspired by. His name was Ryan. If you're thinking that I can't make an in, uh, a difference in encouraging people, well, when Ryan was in year one, he had his teacher say to him that there were people in the world that couldn't go and get a glass of water. A glass of water? Couldn't go no, and get a glass of couldn't water? Couldn't just get a, go to the what? tap and get a glass of water. And some people so had to get up real early, like one o'clock in the morning, and go and get the water for the family and then come back. Well, he went, this isn't right. And do you know what he did? What did he do? He actually raised seventy dollars first up. Seventy dollars. Yep, seventy dollars. Wow. But then he realised it cost two thousand dollars to put a well in. Ooh, that's <sighs> a lot of money. Ah, uh, so he kept on going, and over two years he raised two thousand dollars. This young lad. So he was. Think about that. If he was six, he was eight by the time he'd raised two thousand dollars. Then in two thousand one. He started, uh, so in 2001, he registered Ryan's Well as a foundation. Since then, they have put in 1,531 well, uh, water projects, wells and stuff like that. And then they realised that people had to go home for the toilet so they couldn't work or go to school or learn, especially women, ladies, girls. And so he put in toilets. And then he taught people how to have clean water. So Ryan, I feel, is one of those people that made a difference, just being him and following the passions that God put on his heart to be an encourager. So boys and girls, I want you to be the aroma in somebody else's world. And we can smell what Pastor oh, Chanel is doing there. So you know, good. that ugly onion is starting to turn into something that is smelling great. Is smelling great. So be the aroma in somebody else's world. And you know, if you think about the heat, 
it can be something that changes. And the thing that changes us is having God in our life, knowing that you were created and you've got gifts that nobody else has given by God. And then you use those gifts in words. The words you use, it might be, Chanel, you are doing such a great job there. Oh, thank you, Pastor. Oh, that you're amazing. So good. You know, I am so glad you're here to help because I, I don't know what I would do without you being here to help me with this. You know, actions are really important as well. And, you know, what do you do? What are the actions? A smile, looking out for your mum and dad and going, maybe cooking some um, nice potato patties. Uh -huh. Or um, maybe it might be cleaning up your room or it might be just going and giving somebody a hug or a, a fist pump or a thumbs up. Something really simple. Five. You know, actions that encourage people mm -hmm. and then just who you are. And you know what? There's something I want you to do over this next week. I would actually like you to write an old-fashioned letter to somebody. Grab out a piece of paper or a card and actually do a physical letter. Do a bit of art awesome. on it yeah. and write something that makes somebody's world better by your encouragement. Talk about a message. That was absolutely amazing. I feel so good and inspired and I want to go ahead and share that with someone else. How about you guys like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos that we have to share.